Hi, this is Eric Martin with Working Geek. I'm here with Jeff Tidball from Atlas Games, and we'll be looking at Fast and Fast and <laughs> Fatagen. Fatagen. So when we did the sell sheet, we actually put a pronunciation guide for. We figured retailers ought to be able to say when somebody comes in and right. makes that noise, right. and they're like, "Ah, yes, Fast and Fatagen <laughs> is this way." Yes. All right. Good. Well, that was very helpful. On there. <laughs> here to help. That's right. Um, what is the game? So Fast and obviously Fatagen. we we know from the name here. There's Something it is a it is a Cthulhu street mystery. racing game. So okay. it's a mashup of all of the Cthulhu mythos stuff and all of the kind of street racing tropes from the the Fast and Furious series, which goes on and on and on like the Energizer Bunny. Right. So this uh, game is a standalone sequel to Cthulhu 500, okay. which was a game released about 10 years ago, which is a, a like an indie car. Cthulhu mashup. So with this one, which you had a new to, version of recently. Uh, I had a reprinting. Yeah, out a reprinting. Recently. Yeah. Okay. So the the interesting thing about this and the challenging thing about designing this one was that it has completely different gameplay, but ninety percent of the cards are cross compatible. Okay. So the two games are essentially expansions for each other, but the gameplay experience is completely different. And, you mean just swapping cards? In yeah. Terms exactly. Of, so like that. Uh, okay. that was super challenging to design. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> It took five years to get it done. Like went through four complete redesigns of the entire thing. Right. Uh, but I'm happy with the way it came out, and I think that there's value there for people to be able to play two different games with the same with the right. same stuff. Well, it depends on the, on I guess user feedback in the end. If people are like, "This is awesome. I want the go kart version next," and you're <laughs> right going to be like. Uh, okay, but that's all right. I, I will not be angry about any kind of success. He says that because he's on camera. <laughs> no. I'll be angry okay. later. Okay. So, Fast How and Fatagen, a street racing uh, card game. Mm -hmm. There are always two street mats out here, okay, and they will change as we zoom through the city. Okay. What these street mats do is they define a grid of cards. So we're each going to have, you're going to have a one schematic that will be in front of you. This is the bends in the fabric of space time. So you're going to have one that sits in front of you, and then you're going to have one that is out here in the grid. So we can send this guy off camera now that we've seen that it exists. It's got some stats and so on. But so like, okay. say you're going to start here. You okay. are in the inside lane of traffic that is going in the correct direction. Okay. I'm going to drive the cycle of self-doubt. <laughs> And then it's got one of these two. When we set up, we wind up in kind of an initial position here. Right. And this grid is not anchored by these. These are just telling us what we've got. So in the start, we've got two clear lanes going with us, two clear lanes going against us, okay. and sidewalks on each side. Okay. We can have up to six players, so there'll maybe more, right? We'll just put some more. This is Pikmin's Model T is maybe behind me, and the Migo Bishi, like so. We've got a setup in the direction of traffic. Okay. But we do not need to stay that way and it frankly it's not going to work for it to stay that way. Right. Um, it wouldn't be much of a racing game. It would not like, be much of a stay racing like game. this. As we move so down we've got uh, a leader card and a last place card, and those are going to be important as we move through the street. So those will just move around the table with whoever is, is leading and whoever is in last place anytime that changes. Okay. Right at the moment, you are leading here because it's better to be to the middle among people who are in the same rank. Right. Avoid pedestrians. Well, we get civilians in a minute because okay. these are city streets and they're full of minivans and nonsense like that. Okay. okay. So these will assume we're moving those around the table as we go. Okay. So anytime a new leader takes over, so let's say that I manage to pass you mm -hmm. or pull ahead into a future rank, or anytime the current leader begins a turn, we get new streets. So this is a deck of streets. We just deal them off the top. So what happens here is we move to a new part of the city. And we have lost one of our lanes of traffic. So both of us discover that we are now on the sidewalk, which is very dangerous for our cars. We're going to have to make tests to see if they get damaged or broken. Okay. That's just a quick die roll comparison against the stats on our cars. Okay. We've also discovered that the sidewalk over here is now blocked by a pit to hell. So anybody who was over here driving in that is in a grim situation. They have to try to veer into lanes now in order to avoid a spin out that puts them at the very back of the pack in one of these things back here. Okay. So... That's the one of the key things is that the arrangement of lanes is going to change unpredictably over time. And so it is more and more dangerous to try to pass people on the outside because you never know what's going to happen. Like this over here, this does not even exist. This is someone's front yard behind right. a taco truck or something okay. at this point. So those are going to keep changing up. Also, every time we get new street mats, uh, we make a roll for every one of these lanes and against the target number that's printed on them, and those lanes are going to get civilians. Okay. So, right, say that we roll a five or more here. We just get a minivan here. 
Okay. And that is, this one is going with us, so that's not as dangerous. But if you want to pass me now, you're either going to have to come out into oncoming traffic or, on the or you're going to have to ram me over or do something like that. Now, much more dangerous is when they come in over here because now they're facing towards us. Right. And so if in that last set, let's say that this Migobishi had tried to come out here in order to get around you, but then we change this up and he discovers that there's a card coming straight at him. That is relatively bad news, which is why it's dangerous to drive in oncoming traffic. Don't right. do this at home. It's not, it's not safe. Right. So there are a lot of tactical decisions about how much risk you're willing to take in order to get around the people that are in front of you. Okay. And that's the, the kind of core of the tactical maneuvering, but there's also, it's a comic game and there's lots of nonsense in the cards as well. Okay. So we've got a stack of civilians. Those guys are gonna keep coming up. Um, you've got your, let's grab this back, yep. because you will have the chance to add modifications to your cards, right? So among the hand of cards that you have, some of them are mods. So the perverse bobblehead of Ulthar perhaps is something that you will add. That is gonna give you bonuses to your passing tests. The spinner is away from which mankind cannot look. You've got three <laughs> slots for mods on the sides and on the bottom. The inaudible amplifier. Okay. So you can get bonuses to things going forward. You can also have a driver in your car. There's a whole bunch of crew cards that you can get. So Finn Diesel, the deep one, an undercover FBI agent. These are all things that are kind of Cthulhu mashups with the, the street with racing source team. material. Yeah. So your crew can either be your driver and then they go up here in the top. You would never have this welder thing drive because he's terrible at that. But your undercover FBI agent, perhaps, would right. come in and drive your bends in the fabric of space time to give you bonuses to your passing tests. Okay. Crew cards can also be in your gang, in which case they're not sitting in your car, but you will have the opportunity to get damaged over the course of the game. That just flips your card over and gives you worse stats on the back until you get a chance to fix it. So these guys who are in your gang can help you fix your car in the event that it gets busted because someone crashed into you or whatever. Okay. So you are in addition to trying to pass people, trying to build your car up, but every time you pull over to bolt something else onto your car, everybody behind you gets a free chance to try to pass you. Right. So you're also making trade-offs about how much you want to buff your car versus how much you're just going to pay attention to what is in front of you on the road. Okay. Now, are we racing through a specific number of cards? or There are time? Uh, finish line cards, and they are not at the bottom, but they are near the bottom. So as soon as one of these shows up, in the last eight cards, there is one final turn. Okay. And you win by being in the front of the grid when the game ends. Now there are, one of the other things about the Fast and Furious franchise is that it is all about style, right? It is about your car looking magnificent. It is about walking in slow motion while all the <laughs> stuff behind you blows up. So there are chances to get style points in the course of the game by playing cards. Every time you drive across the center line into oncoming traffic, that is good for style. Okay. So you're going to be accumulating these style points over the course of the game. You can use them for small buffs in game, but one of the things that they are critical for is they can buy you extra turns once the finish mats come up. And okay. so if you have done stylish things in the course of the game, the opportunity to get one more turn after everybody else has gone can often be the difference. Right. The camera's still on you, in other words. The camera is it's, still on you. And exactly you still get still. to show off. Or, that is 100% okay. right. Okay. All right. Well, so thanks that's very much for the overview. I see now you were inspired by uh, road designers in North Carolina. Exactly. The, the lanes so. just disappear. That was the pit to hell here. That's, that's, oh, well, suddenly you're driving along. Oh, we're only we only have one lane anymore. We got, and this one is full of toxic waste. That's right. That that would okay. That's a different state. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's the ideal for Nevada. Apparently, is, is that's what people want to do. True. Okay. But yeah. But thanks very much for the overview. Thank you very much yeah. for doing this. I really appreciate okay. it. Okay. <laughs>